as I learned today, um, we cannot just take old tires from our cars and buses and trucks and just put them in a landfill. And uh, they've got to be disposed of and used in, in a very appropriate way. And that's got people that are thinking about the environment and are in the know coming up with all kinds of creative ideas. Um, I saw a story in one of our state's newspapers about new rubber roads, and that got me intrigued. So um, we picked up the phone or the Zoom, if you will, and got a hold of Kristen Clement. And she is with the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. And uh, Kristen is actually the scrap tire coordinator. Kristen, good morning. Welcome to The Splash. Good morning. How are you? Fantastic. I, I, you know, the, I, it started with me thinking, wow, the state actually has a scrap tire coordinator. Um, that's a pretty cool gig. And it, it just talks about how important this issue is. Absolutely, and we actually have several other staff across the state that um, specifically work with scrap tires. All right, well, it's good to know. You know, I, I, I think back to probably what should have been a clue in the very first place, that old tire, and I love the picture in the background with you with those tires by the, by the water, good place to sit and, and relax with friends, but, you know, I think of that tire hanging on the rope, hanging on the tree in the backyard, you know, that swing that we all used. And just got me thinking this morning as I started working on this story that, um, you know, we've, we, we got to be careful with what we're doing with tires. Why, why, Kristen, can't tires go in landfills? So one of the biggest reasons is because whole tires fill up with landfill gas that's actually generated in the landfill. And then what happens is they actually float to the surface of the landfill. So under the state's uh, solid waste statute, um, we don't allow disposal of whole tires. There are some, um, as we call them, size reduced tires. So at least quartered or potentially chipped tires that have been disposed of landfills, but we're working really hard to keep all of them out of the landfill. Well, uh, that we don't want. That sounds really bad. <laughs> we we definitely don't want that to happen. So there's a lot of uses. Let's talk about a couple of them. First of sure. all, I saw this story in the Lansing State Journal about a, a project going on in the Lansing area that they're actually going to create rubber a road or at least some road surfaces uh -huh. that have some amount of rubber in them. T tell us how that's working and what the benefits of that are. Sure. We've been um, involved in Michigan in uh, rubberized roads for about 20 years, wow. trying to get the material, you know, um, into a format that is more easily used because, you know, about 25 years ago, we had um, large pieces of tires which don't lend themselves well to being put into asphalt, but now we can um, size reduce those tires and include them in asphalt projects. Well, that's awesome. I just want to let our viewers know that we're having a little trouble with your video, but we hear you great. You look fantastic. No, no, it's not your fault. We just don't see your mouth moving. So I just want people to know at home that uh, that's on there. So I apologize for that. But no, that, you've been doing that for 20 years. So we've been putting um, tires in road surfaces for 20 years. Is that just because we need somewhere to put them and it helps? Or does it actually, I'm thinking like a rubber road, I'm thinking it might be a little bit better to drive on. Yes, um, what we're finding is that those those projects last longer. Um, the the rubber does allow the road to stretch and move, so the cracking isn't as bad, um, and actually they're much quieter to drive on. So um, obviously, one of the other places that we see a lot of rubber being used, I didn't think about this till I just saw you here on TV, is uh, our football fields. These, you know, the Ford Field. Most of the high schools now have these these artif artificial turf fields, and uh, mm -hmm. to talk about those. They're using tires as well, correct? They do use that material, and um, and it's a great material for you know, reducing injury. There was a study recently done um, in conjunction with US EPA because there were concerns about the, um, the rubber causing um, illnesses or cancers and that has been proven to not be the truth. So what we're doing here environmentally is good. We're taking rubber that can't really be put into landfills, that can't be reused as a tire, you know, without, I don't know, I assume you can't, and uh, putting it to work in some other way. Football fields, roads, um, I'm sure there's a bunch of other uses. Any other ones you want to mention? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, so the processors we work with have the capability now of taking a tire and size reducing it all the way to um, micronized rubber powder, which is used in plastic injection molding. And the consistency of that material is about like powdered sugar. Um, so if you think about your car tire being reduced to something that fine, that can be reused, it's an amazing opportunity. Well, that's, that is a big, got to be a big environmental savings unless it just takes more energy to make them than it did the plastics. Because making plastics is a problem mm -hmm. and is a challenge Correct. environmentally. So, you know, some really great thinking going on and doing so. And, you know, I didn't realize, back to the road thing, I didn't realize you've been doing that for 20 years. And then I saw some notes here that, you know, that's happening and it's been happening for quite a while, you know, on golf course paths as well Correct. and uh and and is that is in do these rubber infused roads for lack of a better term i mean do they can they be you know effective in really high weight environments like they are on, on, on roads or are they better in like golf cart paths and things or does it really matter now with the technology yeah um so there's there's a combination it's like anything else right um depends on the recipe that they use to build to build the trail we work with um porous pave which is a company over by grand rapids to do literally porous pavement that is um um, the water goes through and disperses. It's very soft. Like if someone was to fall on it, it's uh, more ADA compliant. Um, it does that does not take like freeway um, traffic well. But we do have products and rubber modified asphalt technologies that do take, you know, heavy road traffic. And there just aren't enough tugboats to circle with tires anywhere in the country. We see that happening, of course, for years um, to utilize all the, the tires. So um, given all this and all this technology, um, are we consuming all the tires that need to be consumed in this new environmental way? Or do we still have a problem with big, huge dumps filled with um, large amounts of tires and, and used tires looking for an appropriate environmentally friendly home? So the reason the program was actually started was because of those tire piles. And um, that was, the program was started in 1991. And over that time, we've cleaned up at least 40 million tires um, in different areas of the state. Um, some were, were piled, um, some are community cleanups where we offer uh, community members to come in and bring in their extra tires. Um, there is, definitely room for utilizing the tire material more in the future. Um, Michigan, we generate 10 million scrap tires a year. Wow. And so if you think about that for several years, that's a lot of tires that it, we it, need to it, reuse. It is. Well, it's good you're doing your job. Thank you for your hard work. One final question. Mm -hmm. I, I should have asked this right at the beginning because it seems so obvious. Um, can we not use scrap tires to make new tires? It do that doesn't work? So there is, um, those efforts are underway by the tire manufacturers. There's a certain amount of that material that they can recapture and utilize in their product. All right, Kristen, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you for your hard work and doing all you can do to keep our state clean. And, you know, if you weren't doing that, 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 that 40 million tire stack is going to get higher and higher and higher, and we would really have a severe problem here in the state of Michigan. So uh, next time I go to a football game or I'm driving down one of those roads, I'll be thinking of, yeah, let's keep in touch. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. I couldn't do it without our, our team. I know you got a great team in Lansing. Thank you for your fine work. Kristen joining us, Kristen Clemens. She is our state's scrap tire coordinator. It just kind of uh, surprised me that we had a person in that capacity. And uh, darn good that we do.